let's learn how to tie a bow the Girl Scout way. I was always struggled with my bow tying and really um, was never proud of my bows until the day a Girl Scout taught me what to do. And I have been now for many, many years teaching others this method and um, it really is a lifesaver when it comes to crafting because it's it, it can be a struggle to make a, make a bow that you're proud of. And to the point that I have talked to many people who are so frustrated by it, they don't, they just avoid making bows. They ask somebody else to do it or um, they look for pre-made bows. <laughs> but it's really not hard to do it all. When I was young and learned how to tie my shoelaces, I learned how to tie it, this method. And you see, it does not result in a great bow. I wanted bows with the little t bunny loops sticking straight up and the tail sticking straight down. And my shoe tying method was resulted in twisted, unseemly bows that I wouldn't want to put on my grass. And in teaching this, I've learned that some people actually learn how to tie their shoes with this method that I'm going to teach you. And if that's you, you are in the lucky few. But for everyone else, let's learn how to do it. And I'm telling you, it will work with any kind of ribbon, even printed ribbon. So you want to start, I suggest with a sheer ribbon or a satin, just because that's the easiest to manipulate and play with to begin with. And let's say about 12 inches. It doesn't have to be perfectly 12 inches, but something about that length will make it enough for you to hang on to and get the, get the gist of how to do this. You will have to tie a few times to um, really get the hang of it, but it's really quite simple. So you're going to find the middle. Let's, let's get into it. Find the middle of your um, ribbon length. And then what you're going to do is make two loops, one on each side of that middle. And we're, we're holding or um, pinching those two loops with our forefinger and thumb on each hand. And it's really important that you have this space. You see that? You need that space between the two loops. Sometimes when I teach this, people make their loops way too close together like this. And that just will not work. You need to have that space in the middle. That, that is key. So once you have your two loops, let me show you the top view and the side view. So you have, you have two loops. The ribbon is not twisted anywhere at all. And now we're going to cross those two loops. So you just bring your wrist in and cross them. It doesn't matter if you cross left over right or right over left. We just want the top of those two loops to cross each other. And then you're going to transfer all of that to one hand. So you're pinching all four layers or those two loops together, which have now been crossed between your thumb and forefinger on one hand. And when you do that, you now have the two loops at the top and the two tails at the bottom. And in the middle of the two bottom tails, you'll see this and third loop. That's that middle that I said was super important. And that little bottom um, loop is going to become the knot. So now what you do is take whichever loop is in the back. Again, it doesn't matter if it's the left or the right, it's just whichever one you put in the back. And you're going to cross over the cross and then go through the nose. So bunny ear over the cross and through the nose. And then you're simply going to grasp each bunny ear and pull gently. Just until it's somewhat snug and then let go. That was the hard part. And see, it was really easy. And I know that doesn't look like a bow yet, but you have the foundation. From this point on, it's just about the details and, and making it look cute and fluffy. So to do that, you're just going to pick it up and grasp it gently at that nose area and or the knot. And then you're going to start with your other hand pulling on the tails and on the ears back and forth. And each time you do it, the little knot gets a little bit tighter and a little bit tighter. And at this point, what you're doing is you are forming the bow. You're you're deciding how big of my how big of a bow do I want? How big of loops do I want? How big of tails do I want or long? What I like to do is kind of work a finger or a thumb into the inside of each loop. This is not necessary, but this is what I like to do because it makes the bows really fluffy. It really helps accentuate the loop. Um, and so here I'm going to put my thumb in each one and pull against each other. So I'm grasping the tails and the, see that and pulling against each other. That makes it super tight, which is important. And putting, wrapping the ribbon around your thumbs and pulling it works kind of like a curling iron does in that it forms and shapes the ribbon. And kind of see that? And so you get a nice fluffy round bow and that I personally really like. If you don't stick your fingers inside, you can just pull on the loops if you need a really flat bow. 
And then at this point, if anything was twisted at all, you would untwist it and then pull tight again. So you're looking for anything that's a little bit twisted. If you don't have one here, I'm going to twist it for you so you can see. You're just going to untwist it, unravel it. If it's a tail that is twisted, you're just going to twist it the opposite direction, link going to the direction that you want it in. And now you're just going to trim the ends to the length that you want, and that is on making the perfect 